I've been getting a lot of requests to go through what our family's favorite homeschool curriculums are since many of you know we have five school age kids kindergarten through seventh and then we have one early preschooler and one two-year-old helper we'll call her I'm Stacy from the blog thefromscratchfarmhouse.com and as a homeschooling mom myself I know how overwhelming it can be to pick homeschool curriculum I know many of you are planning on getting a jump start on the new school year by ordering your curriculum early, so I thought that now would be a good time to go through what has worked for our family and what hasn't. I think it's also important to tell you why, because what works for our family may not work for yours and vice versa. There are so many different learning styles and also different homeschooling styles, so hopefully by me describing why these work for us or don't work for us, that will help give you a better idea of if they will work for you. Also, if you manage to make it through this whole video, because I think it's gonna be a little detailed and long, I'm going to reveal what my biggest homeschool curriculum regret was this year and what I would have done differently. I'm also going to organize this video by subject. So in the description, I'm going to have the subjects and then the different curriculums that I'm going to talk about under each subject. So that if you're looking for a specific thing, you can click on those to jump around. All right, let's dive in. First, let's talk about language arts. So when we first started this school year, I had really big plans of not using a formal curriculum for language arts. My idea was that I was going to use read alouds and then supplements from Teachers Pay Teachers in order to teach each of my children the skills that they need within language arts. That lasted a couple weeks and I got super overwhelmed. It was too much to keep track of and I felt like I might be missing things. So then I looked at doing some family style curriculum such as Gather Around Homeschool that includes language arts within their curriculum. After looking more into that and going a little bit further along in our homeschooling journey, I discovered that I actually really appreciate a more detailed, comprehensive, and grade-specific approach to language arts. From there, we turned to the Good and the Beautiful's language arts curriculum for my third, fifth, and seventh grader. It was love at first sight. It is a very comprehensive curriculum. It is completely free to print off for levels one through five. It is aptly named because the curriculum is truly beautiful and has good messages sprinkled throughout. Now one thing I will say about this curriculum is that the grade levels don't always match up with the level of curriculum that you should get for your child. So I know this is something that they're updating as they're updating their curriculum. However, I will say that for my kids, my third grader was in level three, my fifth grader was in level four, and my seventh grader, I started her out at the beginning of the year in level five, which was actually okay but we did decide at the second half of the school year to bump her up to level seven because I really felt like she needed that extra challenge. So the only bummer to that is I did have to pay for it, but for her, I think it was completely worth it. With all that said, my kids are considered pretty advanced for their language arts skills. So I would say that most kids would probably want to be placed in a level below their grade level. Now there is a free online uh, assessment that you can take that will help you place your child and then you can also look at the scope of the course online which I highly recommend doing before you print off or invest in the curriculum. I will point out that this curriculum is religious. It has a worldview Christian perspective which for us doesn't always work well because our religious beliefs don't always match up with the worldview Christian perspective, but for this curriculum, it's been fine and we've enjoyed that aspect of it. If you are a secular homeschooler, you may find that the religion sprinkled in throughout the curriculum is not a good fit for you. Okay, now I do have two potential negatives that I want to point out about the Good and the Beautiful's language arts curriculum. First of all, it is very hands-on. This could be just what your child and you need, or this could be the one thing that keeps you from loving this curriculum. I definitely hop from kid to kid throughout our homeschooling hours, and it's mostly to be able to complete the parent portion of this curriculum. How I have chosen to handle that with so many kiddos is that I don't do most of the parent portions with my two oldest kids, my fifth and seventh graders. So for example, it might say, read this section to your child or read this section to a parent, and I just have them read and follow the instructions on their own, and that has been just fine. However, there are still times when I need to dictate sentences to them, or correct something. So if you're looking for a curriculum that is completely independent, then the Good and the Beautiful probably isn't for you. Second, I didn't feel like there was enough writing practice built into this curriculum. And that was a big part of the reason that we bumped our seventh grader up to level seven, because that's really when they started getting into writing essays and more formal writing. 
I have noticed and appreciated that in the new revised level four, they have included a lot more writing. So maybe that's something they're going to continue to update in the future courses that they put out. But in order to make up for this in the other grades, I have added in another writing curriculum on top of this language arts. That has worked fine for us. Um, it hasn't been a problem, but it is something to be aware of when you're planning out your homeschool year. Okay, one more thing I wanna point out. I did not have my kindergartner or my second grader start off the year doing the language arts curriculum from the good and the beautiful. I'm just now having my kindergartner start this curriculum and my second grader is still not doing it. The reasoning here is that for them, I'm doing a reading program called All About Reading that I absolutely love and I feel like at this age, I really just wanna focus in on reading and writing skills. The Good and the Beautiful also teaches phonics and reading at those lower levels, but I liked All About Reading's a simple approach better at this level. My kindergartner, by using All About Reading Level 1, was able to go from simply knowing about 75% of her letters and letter sounds to reading words within one week of the program, and now six months later is reading simple kindergarten level books fluently. My second grader, who I put in their level three, struggled a bit at the beginning of the year and now six months later is a tremendously better reader with a lot more confidence, so I have nothing but good to say about this program. So for the first part of the year, I only supplemented my kindergartner with the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting program to get that handwriting practice, which I will talk about more in a little bit. So then for my second grader, what we did was the All About Reading level three. We did handwriting from the Good and the Beautiful and then also one page each day from Spectrum's Language Arts Level 2 book. Now as we get into the second half of the year, I have just started my kindergartner on the kindergarten level of the Good and the Beautiful's Language Arts curriculum. Now she has been doing all about reading for about six months, and I'm starting her on the kindergarten level lesson one, and I feel like that is a pretty good match. I don't think she could have started on lesson one of their kindergarten level right at the beginning of the school year. It would have been much too advanced. If I were to go back and do the school year all over again, I would do it exactly the same, focusing in on only the handwriting and reading with those younger kiddos, and then adding in the writing and the grammar later. Okay, now let's talk about some language arts curriculums that did not work for us. Let's start with spectrum spelling. Now, at the beginning of the year, I was determined that all my kids needed a good spelling curriculum, so I purchased these books, and it's a very traditional approach. There is a list of words that they need to practice, and there is a page per day to practice those words, and then you give them a spelling test at the end of the week, or however you structure it. This was fine, and if you are looking for that approach, this is a great book. However, I became a little bit disenchanted with the idea of memorizing a list of words as a good way for them to learn to become good spellers. We have since decided that the approach that The Good and the Beautiful takes within their own curriculum, plus the spelling rules that they're learning within All About Reading is plenty to help them learn to be good spellers. Another curriculum that did not work for us was Wordly Wise. I did this curriculum with my seventh grader and I had heard great reviews about it, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. However, my daughter really did not enjoy it. So this is a vocabulary curriculum. So basically they are memorizing the definitions and the usage of different vocabulary words, and then there's a test. I think she would test like once a week. I began to notice that most of the words in this book I was not familiar with or couldn't use properly. Now, maybe that says something about my lack of vocabulary, but I feel like if as an adult, I can function just fine without these words, she could probably use her time better somewhere else. Now let's talk about some writing specific curriculums that we have tried. We have tried Night Zookeeper, which is an online program. We have done Write Shop and we have done Spectrum's writing workbooks. Night Zookeeper is an online program that helps kids practice their creative writing skills. This was something my kids enjoyed and I felt like it was a good supplement, but not thorough enough for anything more than a supplement. And also I came to realize I wanted my kids off the computer more and practicing their handwriting more. Not to mention the program wasn't free, so after a few months we canceled our subscription. So now that we have bumped up my seventh grader to level seven of The Good and the Beautiful, I feel like her writing is covered in that curriculum alone. But for my second, third, and fifth grader, we have used these two curriculums, Spectrum Writing. So we use this, this is grade three for my third grader and my second grader uses grade two. 
and this is a very basic approach to learning the writing process and practicing their writing skills, which I really enjoy. It's not overwhelming. You can do a page or two at a time, and I do feel like it is teaching, helping teach them their skills. Okay, so Write Shop, this is Write Shop 1, and I'm using it with my fifth grader. It is, I think, made actually for an older child. However, I feel like this is a pretty good level for him. He's doing well with it. He's learning a lot. It's pretty open and go and easy to use. It also comes loose leaf, so it's easy to put in a binder or I just hand out the sections that he needs to do for that week, have him put it in his own binder, and then we're good to go. Okay, so to summarize, because I know that was a lot of information just about language arts, we ended up loving for language arts, the Good and the Beautiful's language arts program, all about reading, Spectrum's writing program, and Write Shop. Now I'm going to talk real briefly about what we have chosen to do for handwriting. We have purchased the curriculums from the Good and the Beautiful for all of my kids for their handwriting practice. I chose to purchase the PDF versions, and then my older kids did a level that taught cursive, while my younger ones completed levels prior to cursive being taught. All in all, I bought four levels that six kids shared, and I just printed it off as we went along. This was also the one true curriculum that I purchased specifically for my four-year-old, and he really enjoys doing this handwriting each morning. My only complaint with this handwriting curriculum was that a level is not enough pages to fill a whole school year. So we finished up after four months, and now we're just practicing handwriting by doing copy work for the remainder of the year. All right, let's move on to math. So at the beginning of the school year, for my second, third, and fifth graders, we started out using Beast Academy. So Beast Academy can either be done online or in these books, and we went with the book version. We all loved the comic book approach to teaching that Beast Academy uses. It is very engaging. I actually enjoyed reading these. My kids would read these books just for fun. However, I found that the mental math and the spatial reasoning that is involved in this particular curriculum was actually over my head quite a few times, and I feel pretty good about my math skills. So after many tears and frustration, we decided that this program was just not working for us. Now, if you really enjoy math, your child really enjoys math, and you have time to commit to this, this might be a really good option. But with so many kids in different levels of math that I was trying to teach, this was just not working because a lot of the time they would need me by their side for every single problem. Okay, so this was for my third, second, third, and fifth grader. But at the beginning of the school year, we started out doing uh, dimensions math from Singapore Math for my kindergartner and my seventh grader. This also did not end up working for us, and here's why. Singapore math for my seventh grader was actually fine, but it did require a lot of my time to help her with it, to teach the lessons, and then to correct everything, and then go back over it. So it was fine, it was a little dry, it is very just workbook based, but I think if it wouldn't have been so hands-on for me to teach it, it would have worked out fine. And then the kindergarten math from Singapore math was very disappointing, actually. Um, I didn't know what to expect, being as she was in kindergarten, and I didn't really know where she should be at. So as we moved along in the first book, I didn't think much about the fact that it was so easy for her. I just thought that maybe she was ahead. But then once I later looked at the Good and the Beautiful's math, which she ended up switching to, I realized how slow and behind this really was. She still enjoyed it. Um, my other complaint with this curriculum is that it was clearly not designed for a single homeschooled child to be doing. A lot of these activities, especially in this teacher's guide, but even listed within the actual curriculum, were geared towards more group activities, such as you would do in a classroom. So it was at this point when we were all frustrated with everything I had started the kids out in for math that we decided to switch to teaching textbooks. Now, teaching textbooks was at first a dream. The kids did it on the computer and it was completely self-taught. The kids enjoyed doing it and best of all, it corrected all their work right on the spot so I never had to touch math. Every once in a while they'd say, mom, I don't understand this and I would have to come over and explain something, but that felt way more manageable than trying to teach all of these math levels every day. 
My only complaint with teaching textbooks at that point was that it was pretty far behind. So most of my kids were in a level, either one or two levels above their grade level. So my third grader was actually doing math five. That's an easy enough thing to adjust for, but it was kind of strange. It made you feel like, are they really learning everything they need to be learning? So that was all going great until December. Teaching textbooks had to completely redo their programs because it was built using old technology. So what happened was they cut off all of the old programs and they made us all switch over to a new app that was supposed to be the new teaching textbooks. Well, that was a very clunky and messy switch over. And to be honest, it's still not great. My kids don't like the setup of the new program and it doesn't work on all but one of our computers. So that was just not working because we had only one computer. It won't even run on our iPad because our iPad's too old. So we were down to one computer that would even run teaching textbooks and that was not working for us. So what we did is my seventh grader continued to do pre-algebra with teaching textbooks and then I switched over again to a new math curriculum for the rest of my kids. For my second, third, and fifth graders, we switched over to Mammoth Math. It is a lesser known curriculum that I absolutely love. It is not as convenient as teaching textbooks, I will say. It does, obviously does not teach or correct by itself, but it is very user friendly. It is easy for me to go explain a lesson quickly, then have them work on those problems on their own and move on to another child. Yes, I'm still bouncing around more than I was like when we were doing the teaching textbooks, but it's working out just fine. I feel like the math is very on level with their grade, and for the most part, they're enjoying it. Also, I wanna mention that Math Mammoth is very affordable, which is one of the reasons we went with this curriculum. I was a little bit nervous because the cost was so much less than other curriculums I looked at, but I would say that it's probably just because it's lesser known and that everything you need is here. So it's very straightforward as far as what you need, the workbooks, and then there's a book that's the tests and reviews. I'm really enjoying this curriculum. Okay, so for my kindergartner, I am actually really depressed that I did not start out the school year using the Good and the Beautiful's math program. This is by far my favorite curriculum out of every subject and everything I have purchased. This math curriculum is something we both look forward to doing every day. It is so cute and well put together. It is so easy to follow along. So I'll just show you, for example, so here is lesson 66. It gives you the checklist of everything you need to do for that day. So you start out doing the calendar. And so we get out our little calendar and she fills that in. It tells you like count to 66, have the child hop around the room counting aloud for each hop. So then we mark that off after we do that. Flashcard shape review, and it's just very step-by-step, -step, so easy for me to follow and do, even with all of these kids, because I can just jump in, see what's next, and then get her started on the next thing. There are many manipulatives, which is very good for her age, and they're garden themed. So really, I was won over <laughs> with this curriculum just with that. The only reason I didn't go with the Good and the Beautiful math for all of my kids when we made the switch was the one downfall of this curriculum is that it is very hands-on and requires me to be there every step of the way and I just felt like with all of these kids in math I wouldn't be able to do that now with my kindergartner I feel like she really needs that hands-on and one-on-one -on -one time with me but I think it would have been a bit much if I had tried to do that with all of my kids However, I'm being told that The Good and the Beautiful is changing up their math curriculum and one of the changes that they're making is to make it a little bit easier for the parents, not so many hands-on and manipulatives and a little bit um, quicker lessons. So if we continue to homeschool next year, I will definitely be going with The Good and the Beautiful's curriculum for all of my kids that they offer their level in. I'm not sure which levels they're redoing and which levels they'll have ready by next year, but provided they have it, I will be purchasing it. Okay, next up is science. So I have two science curriculums to show you. For my seventh grader, we went with Bob Jones University's Life Science. It is a more traditional approach to learning science with a textbook where there is questions at the end of each section. 
It is also a Christian worldview based curriculum, which is actually pretty refreshing for someone who was raised in the public school system. There's also a lab book that goes along with it that helps make it more hands-on and interesting for the child. Overall, I have been completely satisfied with this curriculum. I also was able to get it used online, so that was a huge savings. But I would definitely go with Bob Jones University for my older kids in the future as well. For all of my other kids, we do science as a family, and we have been using the Good and the Beautiful's science units. Our favorite unit so far has been this mammals unit. They are very fun for the kids. I have actually been learning a lot. They're fun, they're hands-on, there are lots of activities geared towards all of my different ages. I will say though that I don't think that just doing the lesson extensions that are available for older kids is enough science to prepare them for high school. So after fifth grade, I think that something else that is a bit more comprehensive is needed. Unless you maybe have fewer kids and you have the time and energy to get through several of the units in a year and find supplements to the lessons on your own. In true Good and the Beautiful fashion, the pictures and hands-on pieces of this curriculum are truly beautiful. I was continually amazed as we went through this curriculum at how gorgeous the photography is. All of the little details to this curriculum are pretty impressive. Okay, for those of you that made it this far in the video, I'm gonna reveal what my biggest homeschool curriculum regret was this school year. So I went with Masterbooks for history and we purchased America's Story 1. So this is the teacher's guide is what they call it. And then here is the textbook portion of it. Now I will say that the textbook portion, my kids really enjoyed. It is just a read aloud basically with some pictures. So we would go section by section and it is well written. So it's written to the children as if the author was talking straight to them, which they really enjoyed and found it to be an easy listen. However, it is a lot of words, so my little kids would never really sit there and listen to it. They would get bored pretty quickly. The accompanying workbook, however, was nothing but a disappointment. So what we ended up having to do was find resources from Teachers Pay Teachers for each of the subjects in this book, pay for those, print those out in order to have hands-on to go along with the subject matter that was covered in this book. Because, let me show you. My plan was just to make copies from these workbooks for each child, so luckily I only bought one. We made it through not even a whole page and decided to scrap this book altogether. The worksheets were not only very boring, but I didn't see much value in them. Instead, I ended up spending quite a bit of time and money purchasing the supplements from Teachers Pay Teachers. Had I known better, I would have not purchased this curriculum and instead went with the Good and the Beautiful's History curriculum, which covers the subject matter in a similar way, but after downloading their samples and looking over what I could have purchased, I think I would have been way more happy with the hands-on and worksheets with the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum rather than this. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully me going over our favorite curriculums and what didn't work for us is a help to you in choosing what curriculums will fit best for your family in the coming school year. If you at all enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. That helps tell the YouTube algorithm that others might find this content helpful as well. Also, for more videos on homesteading, homeschooling, food from scratch, and creating a handmade home, make sure to hit subscribe.